Champions of Cameroon are expected in Maputo, Mozambique this night for their return leg AFCON duel against the members of Mozambique. The Lions left Douala this afternoon. How to protect your personal... Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. Today has been observed the world over as World Diabetes Day and in Cameroon, diabetes treatment for patients below 21 years is now free. Public uh, specialized centers are now open to provide treatment to these patients at no cost. This move is a decision taken by the President of the Republic. Gerard Nanji Yambe spoke to some persons living with diabetes on this decision and our report. 20 World Diabetes Day in Cameroon is being observed under a peculiar context. The decision making diabetes treatment free for sufferers of the disease who are below 21 years has been received with a sigh of relief. After carrying out the test, it was discovered that I am diabetic. The treatment costs a lot, so it is a good decision for patients less than 21 years to receive free treatment. An initiative that has equally been applauded by the medical could call. It will be good because it's not easy for a patient concerning those who are still young to take care of them per month. A patient can use 40,000 to take care of them. Concerning that decision, we are very happy. The management of diabetes is quite exhausting and so such a move will go a long way to lessen the ordeal that those affected go through. And still talking about the World Diabetes Day commemorated uh, today, November 14. Persons living with diabetes have been trained on how to check and control sugar level in their blood. The one-day seminar, the Yaoundé uh, General Hospital uh, by Dr. Dan Ngambo, who is one in a series of activities marking the World Diabetes Day. Alice Mbe reports. Specialists in the treatment of diabetes patients say the increasing rate of diabetes patients in the country is alarming and COVID-19 patients are most vulnerable. Diabetes is the risk factor of COVID infection. It is noticed that the diabetes patients are the most patients who would die due to the COVID infection. Patients complain treatment is not usually easy. Somebody who is now on the insulin, it's not easy to treat the person because there are some stubborn patients. And at times to get the insulin, because there are different, different types of insulin, to get the insulin was not easy for us. To prevent diabetes, less fatty food and physical exercises are recommended. They should eat uh, uh, mostly vegetables, mostly soup, but with less carbohydrate. Diabetologists advise patients to respect their causes and treatment. The number of diabetes patients has risen sharply this year due to related setbacks caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Health experts at the Swa Hospital carrying out a free screening add that as much as persons living with diabetes must take good care of themselves, they must also respect COVID-19 barrier measures. Victor Siga reports. This year's commemoration is observed under the theme, Nurses Make the Difference. These nurses have therefore come out to make the difference for these affected people to help them manage their disease and prevent further complications. We are here today to sensitize the public on what diabetes is all about. We, are, we do free screening, as you can see, free consultation, and many other things to accompany diabetes and the complications of diabetes. There were so many people out there without the knowledge of diabetes. The day has been termed a unique one, marked by the COVID-19 pandemic which has caused many challenges for diabetics in Cameroon. It will be difficult to control the rise of diabetes 
when you are not you are not following the principles of prevention having a healthy way of eating having exercise every single day this campaign was therefore to raise awareness about the disease its impact on health and effective strategies to prevent and control diabetes the Ministry of Labor and Social Security and the Ministry of External Relations have signed a convention to boost the training of persons across Africa on administration at the Central Administration School, Kradat. Gregor Ona, Minister of Labor and Social Security, who is also President of the Board of Directors of Kradat, signed for the Ministry, while Ojun Belambela signed for the Ministry of External Relations. Charles Ibunet tells us more. Yaoundé has been the headquarters of the Africa Regional Center for Labor Administration, created in 1969, amongst other objectives, to ensure quality training on labor employment, vocational training, occupational health, child labor, and human resources, with 18 member countries. This new legal instrument characterized by a hub to date content and tailor to help us achieve our shared ambitions. The purpose of today's ceremony is in accordance with the full pass conferred by the head of state to affix the signature of the government of Cameroon represented by the Minister of Labor and Social Security on the Convention on the Revised Statutes of the African Regional Center for Labor Administration will be implemented against a backdrop where member countries express a growing need for high-level expertise in the field of industrial relations and social security. The solemn event also aimed at boosting other member countries to sign and ratify the set convention in order to speed up its entry into force. The Minister of Youth and Civic Education, Monuna Fotso, has rounded off his one-day working visit to the West region with uh, the distribution of checks to deserving youths for Jai economic empowerment. In line with the three-year special youth plan, the minister also visited some business clusters and pioneer villages of youth, which now serve as success stories of the plan in the West region. Hanan Jong tells us more. The busy day of Minister Monuna Fotso had as high point the ceremony here at the Chang Ceremonial Ground. Amidst these top-ranking personalities, hordes of youths drawn from all over the West region were on hand to witness the handing over of checks worth equipment offered to some deserving youths in line with the three-year special youth program. The West region is specific because it's a the agro-pastoral production zone and Chang, which is a city of hosting the University of Agriculture. Depending on the projects presented, the checks varied from less than a million to 20 million CFA francs. We ask the young beneficiaries of West region to be really committed and devoted in their project. The ambassador of the Youth Connect concept, Francoise Pueme, and the West Regional patron of the youth, Bernard Fongang, were outstanding guests at the event, which began with stopovers at business clusters like here in Bamundu and agricultural endeavors in some parts of the Mono. Let's talk now about the graduation of some police officers uh, from the National Police School. We're talking precisely about the Central African Police staff. They range from police constables, uh, superintendents of police, uh, police officers after a one-month uh, refresher course. Let's get details from Beatrice Ngom. The Central African Police staff trained by the Yaoundé National Advanced Police School range from police constables to superintendent of police. The 15 policemen and women received a one-month refresher course on the training of trainers, which they will in turn apply in the training of the police in the Bangui Police College. In 160 hours of training and in 10 modules, they were drilled on the functions and duties of a trainer, training methodology, effective practice and ethics. 
at the close of the training, they received and of course attestations from the representative of the Delegate General for National Security, Police Commissioner Vogo Jean Marie. In a speech on the occasion, the police commissioner hinged on collaboration between Bangui and Yaoundé, which he says encourages regional integration. He called on the trainers to effectively apply what they learned in their respective fields. On something about the economy, uh, while officials taxed with collecting social contribution insist that they are reinforcing strategies to ensure that employers do not cheat employees of their social dues, economic experts argue that more needs to be done. Among their proposals are the promotion of an inclusive economic stimulus plan and policies to incite tax payments. Clarice Areta can tells us even more. Recovering social security dues is crucial, officials of the National Social Insurance Fund insist. The fact that many workers are cheated out of their social benefits is worrisome. Reason why? Economists propose investing in growth drivers as one of the solutions. Building more companies they hold will enable their state better guarantee that enterprises honor their obligations to workers. Policies which incite the payment of taxes have equally been suggested. Fiscal exemptions or exonerations could be a profitable stimulant for the recovery of social contributions and arrears. Other views hold that subventions should be granted to businesses in strategic domains of activity, including those of the private sector. Meanwhile, officials charged with collecting social dues explain that there is equally the possibility of granting moratorium to enterprises to enable them clear their debts. Furthermore, trade unionists have been tasked with putting up a common front in order to better defend the rights of workers, capacity building and good governance put forward in order to avoid a situation where some practices put managers in a spot which exposes them to the cold hands of the law. Experts in statistics and stakeholders of the National Department of Statistics in Cameroon have been discussing ways of modernizing national statistical systems to provide data to support sustainable peace and development in Africa. These experts met during a ceremony to observe uh, the African Statistics Day and explore ways of improving the activities of the sector. Luma Slim Davis reports. Contribution of governance in its various dimensions to development and in ensuring that policy making is evidence based. Without statistics, it will be difficult for us to plan. It helps us to better plan to address situations, especially emergencies uh, that confront us. In commemorating the African Statistics Day, debates were focused on modernizing national statistical systems to provide data and statistics to support sustainable peace and development in Africa. This year, we are showing the importance of civil registration data in the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals. To generate statistics, especially civil registration statistics, first of all, the system has to be computerized so that at a given time, we can give statistics for death, we can still give statistics for cause of death, we can give statistics on birth and statistics on marriages. Macroeconomic decision making grounded in data and statistics is the best bet in ensuring strong economic growth and job creation. A group of business women from Africa and uh, come from Cameroon and other African countries are working on strategies of creating online enterprises to further create wealth. The women have been following lectures and participating in a video conference in Yaoundé. As we hear in this report, more by Romeo Kenye. The promotion of women's entrepreneurial skills in a post-COVID-19 era was the substance of the meeting held by these women in a teleconference. Participants selected from Africa, European countries, and other continents brainstormed on possible ways of creating and promoting new businesses on social media platforms. When creating a product for an enterprise, we need to know the value added that it brings to the community. The association's president, Marie Brigeon Gobikex, residing in France, has also called on the women to work hand in gloves. The women have each taken the full engagement to put to practice the notions acquired from the visual meeting. 
Inhabitants of Betua are very satisfied now with the new urban transport service in the city. The initiative by the governor of the East Region, Gregoire Vongo, in collaboration with the city mayor and a partner travel agency, has been greatly welcomed by the population. Mati Mabu Mabu reports from Betua. Who could ever have imagined that with only 100 francs, a people or student will ply 12 kilometers of road from the entrance of Betwa in Bonis to Manju? It helped people to save money because at first they transport people from Manju to Bonis at the sum of at least 500. I can see that they are keeping 400 for themselves. The city mayor, Jean-Marie Sodia Dimbele, who has been spending sleepless nights for this dream to become a reality. Accidents have reduced drastically. I want to thank the governor for this initiative and the partnership between the council and the travel agency partner. It is thanks to the relentless efforts of the governor of the East Region, Gregoire Vongo, who has a vision for Betwa and the region in general. People I meet uh, tell me that uh, they are satisfied. They can send their children to school without sharing accidents that they encounter earlier when uh, traveling by motor taxi. The future is bright as Betwa, a futuristic town, is emerging in all the means and the urban transport sector is not left out. A child who was stolen from his parents about 10 years ago in Sancho, in the Menwa division of the West region by a certain Eliano uh, Masajeo, has been discovered in an orphanage in Fumbot. This follows investigations carried out by officials of the Fumbot police station. Kelvin Nembo, please tell us more. Touching moment. A missing son by name Brian, abducted by one Eliano Masaggio in Casala Farm neighborhood in Sancho, in the Mena Division, reunites with his biological parents 10 years after in an orphanage in Baleveng, where his abductor recently took him to. Brian's biological mother, Eliane Medieu, 23 years at the time of the incident, jubilates, thanking God for proving her innocence. Her ex-husband is speechless for she was accused together with her parents for having used the child for rituals. During the reconstruction of a similar crime scene with the 45-year-old Eliano Masaggio who was already serving a jail term for related crimes broadcast on one of CRTV's news editions, Brian's family discovered the lady, their immediate neighbor, they will then notify the officials of the Fumbot police station who opened investigation. Within the space of 10 years, Eliano Masaggio has been able to steal three children, one in Sancho 10 years ago, another in Buda 3 years ago, and the most recent, a three-month-old baby in Fumbot. One does the say will never end. Close to three months after the collapse of the Pala Bridge in Marua, the population has been struggling to use other painful alternatives to arrive at their destinations. Heavy-duty trucks now use just one bridge, Pong Ve, which creates traffic on the bridge as it raises a lot of dust in the neighborhood. The population are now pleading with the authorities to construct the culvert near the fallen bridge to ease circulation. As you tell us, Henry Tato Ekambi. The residents of this Pala neighborhood in Marua and those who want to pass through this area have been going through hell since the collapse of this bridge close to three months ago. They want this culvert rehabilitated as a temporary measure to lessen the ordeal. When it was raining, we were obliged to remove our shoes before we cross over. The state should try and rehabilitate this culvert. When we students are crossing here in the evening, thieves too harass us. Truck drivers who now have just one option to turn to, that is the pong there, usually find themselves in neighborhoods in the heart of Marua, which in turn makes life a nightmare for the residents. They have too much dust. When they pass like that, you cannot sleep. The noise. As the populace plead with the state to do something fast, there are also fears that these pong there that date back to the colonial era might also give way due to the pressure it's absorbing now. 
13 Cameroonian higher education staff have successfully braved the examination to rise to the ranks of associate and full professors. The examination, known in French as Agregation, went on in Brazzaville, Congo, organized by the Africa and Malagasy Council for Higher Education, CAMES. Let's hear more from Alphonse Abongwa Achu. The nation welcomes its latest associate and full professors. They went to Brazzaville, Congo, defended academic research works before a panel of international jury from Africa and Madagascar to back home the prestigious accolades. One peculiarity, Team Cameroon stood out of the crowd. Congratulate them because it was a very, very tedious exam and they did very well. The 13 new professors are specialists in different areas of medicine. Amongst them, the first ever military medic, 51-year-old now Colonel Professor Koki Godefroy. Also peculiar this year, the first ever woman of English language expression in the examination exclusively for French-speaking academicians. We couldn't make 100 percent, but we are happy with what we made. I'm sure we made our over 80 percent success rate, so we are very happy with that. 18 candidates went in for the crucial exam, and 13 of them made it triumphantly. Some farmers in Garoa 3 subdivision of the North Region have been schooled by experts from the Ministry of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises on how to become skilled agro-pastoral entrepreneurs. During the two-day workshop in Kismatari, organized within the framework of a project known as Dahel Water, the 72 participants were also trained on how to diversify and increase agricultural production all year round. Tony Nyanyongo reports. Agriculture is the main source of livelihood for the population of Kismatari in Gara 3 subdivision. It is said that the farmers have the qualities of entrepreneurs but need support to explore their potential. Thus, the training workshop, which among others, include lessons in leadership and confidence building. Our mission is to train actors about how to change their mindset, how to develop their project, how to be the big entrepreneur as in other uh, regions. Besides agro-pastoral entrepreneurship, training for the 72 workshop participants also include techniques to increase production all year round. We want to give them uh, education to leave poverty. The workshop has been organized within the framework of the project known as Sahel Water. This involves the construction of boreholes powered by solar energy. The overall objective is to develop agriculture and empower rural communities. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice. Of course, we cut into the second canto to talk about our fight against COVID. Tonight, we begin another tour of the different regions to see how these regions are holding up the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Nine months after the first case was detected in Cameroon. We begin with the central region this time. And to know more, let's go over to the Public Health Emergency Center to meet Baldwin Tama, who is standing by with his guests from the central regional delegation. Hello, Baldwin. Hello. Good evening to you, Benin Bumagana. As you actually said, uh, we were supposed to be having uh, officials of the Centre Regional Delegation of Public Health to give us an uh, update uh, via video conference for the latest uh, uh, statistics talking about the fight against the coronavirus here in the Centre Region of Cameroon. But due to some technical hitches, it's not possible for us to get in touch with uh, these officials who are very, very busy uh, working on these uh, latest updates as far as the coronavirus is concerned. But information uh, made available for us as 
far as this uh, central regional delegation of public health is concerned, it's a lot of sensitization ongoing to uh, limit the spread of the coronavirus here in the, in the central region of Cameroon. They talk about sensitization in the school milieu, the different primary, uh, secondary schools, and equally in the university milieu. After the start of uh, classes and lectures, they have uh, recorded some imp uh, an impressive feedback so far uh, as far as uh, the respect of for these outlined barrier measures in primary, secondary schools, and equally in the different universities here in the central region. And the main aim of uh, health officials here uh, at the central regional delegation of uh, public health is to ensure that uh, uh, there is a very, very low rate, uh, talking about the spread of the coronavirus in this central region of Cameroon. Back to you, Benin Bumagana. Thank you very much, Baldwin Sama von Cayman. But before Baldwin Tama went to uh, the CUSP, uh, he was telling us that a multifunctional sports complex of the Mutual Assistance Fund of Staff of the Taxation Department has been inaugurated. The complex is situated in Tun, a locality along the Yaoundé Simalen Road. Now, Baldwin says the facility was opened by the Minister of Finance, Louis Paul Motazé, in this report. An official inauguration of the multifunctional sports complex in two phases. Phase one, the official handing over of the key to the Minister of Finance, Louis Paul Motazé, then the cutting of the ribbon. The guided tour of this facility was an opportunity to discover the different football stadia, the five tennis courts, basketball and volleyball courts, a hotel and a swimming pool. A laudable initiative of staff of the taxation department. What the Mutual Assistance Fund of the Taxation Department has done is very important. It permits them to relax for a platform work to do. Saturday's ceremony was a crowd puller as members of governments, heads of diplomatic mission, political and administrative authorities, staff of the Ministry of Finance were present and especially sports actors who will make use of this complex. This infrastructure has come as a green light to us that we can have competition in Cameroon, international competition, we can hold it. A gymnasium for in-house sports is one of the projects of phase two as staff of the taxation department were congratulated for such a laudable investment. Let's talk something more in sports. The indomitable lions of Cameroon are expected later this evening in Maputo, Mozambique for the next leg qualifier match of the uh, AFCON 2021 against the members of Mozambique. The Indomitable Lions took off from the Douala International Airport this afternoon with farewell messages from uh, the fans who turned out to cheer their darling team and root for a possible uh, retake, le return leg victory against the members of Mozambique on Monday in Maputo. Cameroon are leaders of Group D with seven points, three points adrift of their second. Mozambique, Mozambique, whom they trashed Thursday, four goals to one in Douala. And it is with that note that we come to the end of this edition of the 7.30 News. At 8.30, you will be in the company of Dudu Nicole. I'll be back here tomorrow. Have a very wonderful evening. God bless you. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing. Ici, toute l'info.